You are the fox. Life be like if you were really beautiful, or in the men's case, handsome. Did you know that you can now get plastic surgery on your lunch hour? You can even take a pill that promises to keep you young. And if you believe the labels in the slick magazine ads, you can get creams and lotions that get rid of wrinkles, they can erase cellulite, they can smooth your skin, they can make you more beautiful. Now, how far do you go to look like Claudia Schaefer or Cindy Crawford? Today, we're going to meet women who say they would do anything, they would try anything to look beautiful or, in some cases, to look younger. Let me tell you about my first guest. This is before I bring her out. Her name is Cindy, and she has spent more than $100,000 trying to look younger and beautiful. Let me tell you what she's put herself through. She started uh, very early on with having half a facelift. Then she had a lower eye job. Then she had a nose job. Then she had another nose job. She didn't like the first one. Then she had a third nose job because she had her nostrils narrowed. Then, yeah, you know to make your nostrils narrower. Then she had a chemical peel on her face. And next came something called an upper and a lower blepharoplasty. And I'll have to find out what that is. Then came lip, lip augmentation, you know, nice big full lips. Then there was a lower facelift. Then she had liposuction on her jaw. She had liposuction on her waist, her tummy, her thighs, and her knees. Then she got silicone breast implants. Then there was another facelift. Then there was a jawbone reduction where they saw the jaw in half. They move it back to look smaller, and they screw it in place with little titanium bolts. Then she had laser treatment on her forehead. Then she got silicone cheek implants. Then she had the fat sucked from her hips and injected into her lips and into the lines around her mouth. Then she had ultrasonic liposuction. I have no idea what ultrasonic liposuction is on her inner thighs. And finally, she spent 20000 to have her teeth reshaped. <laughs> I'm dying to see what Cindy looks like after her going through all of this. Cindy, come on out. <laughs> Pretty fabulous, huh? How old do you think Cindy is? 25. That's 25, 26. Cindy, how old are you? I'll be 41 this June. Cindy, why have you gone? We, we saw pictures of you early on. You were never, no one could ever say you were ugly. Well, they did. They said you were ugly? Well, I was never compared to a summer's day. <laughs> but you were, if anything, maybe just plain. Would I was that... plain. I was ordinary. I was invisible. And by the time I was in my mid-30s, I was badly prematurely aged. I looked like I was in my 40s when I was in my late 20s. And I wanted more out of life. I, I used to sit back and watch life going on around me. I was on the outside looking in. <laughs> pretty girls used to get the things I wanted out of life. And all they had to do was be pretty. They didn't need at, to, to work at it. They didn't need to be smart. They Someone didn't... has said, and I'm, this is a terrible misquote, you'll just have to forgive me, that a witty woman is interesting, but a beautiful woman is powerful. Is that true? Yes. Beauty gives you power? Beauty gives you more power than all the brains and the money in now, the world. Now, I would think if you had gone through all of that, that maybe she'd be kind of a dumb bunny type. This lady is a Mensa. This lady uh, holds jobs and does all kinds of amazing things, and yet you still think it's the beauty? This gentleman disagrees. I, Sally, I agree with what's, what's inside is what gives you power, nothing on the outside. So, so I'm not saying she's not beautiful, but we could all be beautiful and we could be very, very ugly inside. So are you saying a woman is too powerful if she's beautiful inside and out? Oh, absolutely. Out? Every woman is powerful. 
I think every woman is powerful. Inside, inside is all there. you need. We like you. <laughs> we like you. Go ahead. You say you want something out of your life, but don't you spend most of your time in hospitals? Is that what you want out of your life? No, it doesn't take that long. It doesn't take that long. No. You're 40 and you've had three face, facelifts and an eye job. Isn't that a lot for somebody as young as you? I was very prematurely aged, so I needed that many facelifts and then that many procedures to get the look that I wanted. I wanted to look prettier and I wanted to look younger. It took more than one or two procedures to get the look I wanted. That's why I carried on until I so you finished. got it. Yeah. Did you switch doctors or did one person do I, all? No, I've been to seven doctors on three continents. You told us that you will have more facelifts in the oh, yes. future. Yes. And whatever it takes to stay looking exactly like you, like Dorian Gray, just like... Yes. I intend to look pretty much like I do now until I'm in my 60s. You're going to look like this no matter what it takes when yes. you're 60. Yes. You told us that you do not feel that you're addicted to plastic surgery. Well, anybody who's had plastic surgery knows it's not something you crave. It, I wanted what was at the other side of the operation. I didn't enjoy the process. Certainly not. Do you feel that your focus on appearance sets women back? I don't feel that it's just focusing on appearance. I focus on everything, stress management. Um, I, 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 I tell women they should be looking for the beauty in life, not just in the mirror. Beauty is everywhere if you look for it, and so is ugliness. It just depends on which you prefer to focus on. Cindy had nude photographs taken on her 40th birthday. Tell us about that. These are the type of pictures I would never have posed for when I was in my early 20s, or even when I was in my teens. Um, it was just something I, I mean, every woman dreads 40. It was just my little triumph to say, right, I'm 40 years old, but this is how I look. I didn't look like this when I was a teenager. I was never asked out for, by the football players. Um, I was never homecoming queen. I was never even cheerleader. Neither was I. No. <laughs> but I got to the age of 40, and I'm finally, I finally have the life that I dreamed about as a little girl. And it is your life. Let me introduce my next guest. This is Jeanette. Jeanette is 36. When Jeanette was 24, she had her first eye job. And since then, she's had uh, extensive cosmetic surgery to keep herself looking more beautiful and younger. Jeanette, let me uh, just read the list of what you've done in 12 years. When you were 24, you had, the, you had your eyes done, plus a nose job and liposuction under your chin. Then you had another nose job because you weren't happy with the first. It was um, not small enough, and uh, the nostrils also, narrowed okay. the nostrils a little When bit. you were 26, you got saline breast implants, cheekbone implants, liposuction on the tummy to make it flat, collagen injections in your lips. Did that work, the collagen in the lips? Um, actually, collagen, it disappears usually about 30 to 45 days, and it's about $300 per injection, and it got to be pretty costly, so I just... Don't Gave people say something if you have fat lips one day and then it goes away? It's not that, <laughs> it's not that big of a, it's not that visible of a difference. It's not like really big. It's moderately big. You also had laser surgery to remove a scar from your cleavage area. That didn't really work. I mean, you have to keep up with it. And laser surgery, you have to stay out of the sun because uh, it, it comes back. The scar, the darkness, the discoloration will come back. So eventually I'm going to have that. Uh, surgically removed eventually. Anybody's watching and they have scars, they're going to want to ask you. And you say you're due for another eye job to get rid of the lines near your eyes and you want more liposuction on your waist to have a more sculptured figure. What made you think you needed this when you were 24? Well, um, when I, I, I have a pretty active social life, and I was socializing ever since really I was 16 with a fake ID and whatnot. But um, I started to frequent these clubs restaurants, bars, what have you, that attracted a certain kind of man, that attracted a certain kind of people, very upwardly mobile, um, very, very good looking men. And I saw that um, basically it was the real pretty girls that was getting the attention from that kind of man that I really wanted to have in my life. And uh, everybody was fawning all over them, putting them on pedestals. And I'm like, gee, what about me? Are men and that important? 
it's not just about men. I mean, I didn't do this for, for man, for the sake of men. I did it for me so I could feel better about myself. I saw things that needed improvement. And, you know, if you have the, the um, resources to do so, then I think that if a woman finds things that, that she can improve on, why not go ahead and do it if it's going to make you feel better about yourself? How is your love life? I'm very happy now. I've attracted that kind of man that I want, and we're both very happy. You, very happy. you told us that every time you have surgery, you really look forward to the surgery. Actually, I do. It kind of gives me sort of a, you know, a rush when, they, you know, when you go to sleep and they put the sodium pentothal on you, you start counting backwards from 100, and you know that when you wake up, you're going to have all these nicer things about you when you come out of that anesthesia. So we'll have everyone now wanting to try sodium pentothal. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about uh, jobs. How does it help in the job? Uh, um, there was one instance. Um, I'm a paralegal, a freelance paralegal, and also an aspiring actress. Uh, when I was not freelancing, I was um, a paralegal working for an attorney. There was a job that I really wanted, but it really wasn't available. I phoned into an attorney pitching myself. And he says, well, we're not hiring right now, but come on in and drop us a resume. Shortly thereafter, about a week after, um, he called me in and hired me. And I found out from a colleague that he had fired the previous paralegal to hire me. And she was overweight, and she was just as qualified as me, but he let her go because of that, I found out. Whoa. <laughs> well, you're going to meet a woman next who wrote us a letter saying, just like you two might have felt, I'm kind of miserable because I'm getting older and my body is getting flabby, and I really think I need to have those thighs taken care of before it's too late. So I asked, how old is she? She's 26 years old. Now... Can we do this for her, get rid of her thighs, or most of them, and what's going to happen to her after we do that? Stay with us. interested in this because uh, for years in television, uh, you know, I've had what I hope is a long career, if not necessarily always a successful one. People said to me, you don't look right. And I often wondered what would happen if I had somehow or another, never had enough money to live, <laughs> let alone have all these procedures done. I always wondered what would have happened with me if I had done that. Now, you've just seen two, so I'm very interested in what's going on today. You've seen two pretty extreme examples of women and what they'll go through in their effort to stay young or be beautiful, at least from the outward appearances. Uh, but for those of us who are not about to spend $100,000 on plastic surgery, you still may want to do what you can to look and feel younger. I'm going to ask the audience, how many want to make any change in themselves? Some kind of change. Okay. I would say maybe a quarter of the people in the audience. The rest are so terribly thrilled with their outrageously <laughs> good looks that they want nothing changed. Meet Shannon. Shannon is 26. She is worried because her body doesn't snap back the way it used to. Shannon, you wrote us a letter. Read a portion of the letter. Snap back at 26? I know it sounds funny, but it's, it's true. Okay. Uh, my letter said, Dear Sally, I am writing you to be because you are my only hope. I am talking about plastic surgery, liposuction, breast implants. If I could have liposuction on my butt, thigh, hip area, I would be so happy. I heard that you can take fat from one part of a woman's body and put it into her breast area. I would be thrilled with that. My bottom half is so big, my sister used to call me eggplant and pear. When I go shopping, nothing ever fits. It is so humilia humilia humiliating, <laughs> and it's days like that that I cry. I have a wonderful, wonderful husband who adores me, but that isn't enough because I don't feel good about myself. My two children added parts to my body that no one would want, my thighs, and took parts every woman needs. 
breast. What I need is a body adjustment. Now, you're very serious about this. Yes. Um, everybody always tells me, oh, you're so cute. You're, you know, you've got two wonderful children. You, you know, you have a wonderful husband. I disguise my weight very well. Uh, but when I get in a bathing suit in the summer, everybody's eyes pop out. <laughs> <laughs> well, or you think they do. They do. <laughs> okay. When we got Shannon's letter, we contacted an old friend of ours. This is a cosmetic dermatologist, Dr. Howard Sopel. <laughs> whom, I've, uh, whom I've known for how long? 15 years. 15, 20 years. Dr. Sobel, is her situation typical of women who come for help? Oh, without a doubt. I actually saw Shannon up in the, your office for the first time uh, this morning. Actually, she sent, uh, your office sent me over pictures last week, and uh, she talks about four years ago when she first got married, she always had this sort of so-called violin deformity where your hips <laughs> come out and your thighs come out. And if you look at it, and we'll look at her shape in a second, you'll, you'll see that she is shaped sort of like a violin. And it's not very, and I hate the word deformity, but it's the shape. <laughs> Of her body and unfortunately no matter what she does she could be let's say she dieted and exercised that's right we're all thinking she should just diet and exercise will that work no well no. it'll work to the point that she won't change her shape she will lose weight she will look thinner she'll but tone up is liposuction should be for a person that is in great shape who exercises who diets and no matter what they do they can even be gone to the point that they lose, they're actually underweight. But what happens, it does not change the shape of the body when you lose weight. Have you ever had it done on you? No. You think, think I need it? No! <laughs> no! <laughs> we haven't seen your knees. Though, so we don't I haven't know. seen my love handles either. And Dr. Sobel's a bachelor, so he's in the thing there trying to... <sighs> now, Shannon said she'd heard of an operation where they take fat from your hips and put it into your breasts. <laughs> Who does, do you do that? That's a, that's a very questionable procedure. Some people do do it, uh, but the problem with that is, first of all, when you transfer fat, and I transfer fat to the lips or wrinkle lines, it doesn't last forever. Probably 50% lasts at a, at a year point, and then the, uh, probably another 25% will last permanently. See, so, Shani, you'd be buying a new bra every week. But I think, Sally, <laughs> I think it's very important to know when you transfer fat into a breast area, Sometimes the fat will become calcified, and uh, if it does become calcified, at a later date when you do mammography, you, they may be confused. Is it a calcification because you have a premalignant or malignant lesion, yeah. or is it the fat that became calcified? Shannon, you don't so for that this. reason no. alone, I don't do it, even though some people actually do the procedure. And it's not permanent, so I don't recommend, recommend taking fat from the thigh and putting it into a breast area. Now, you saw her, right? Yes, I did. You saw Shannon. Is she a good candidate for life? She really is. And Shannon, and you don't mind me t mentioning your weight? Uh -uh. Uh, Shannon is about 5'1", five, 5'2", five, and she weighs about 135 pounds. Ideal weight for Can her... Can you stand up, Shannon? <laughs> okay. She looks all right to us. Do you, do you want to show everyone? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let me this. This is not the ideal situation here, but... So why don't you turn around, and she has, I, I was wanting to put her in a bathing suit, but we at a later date in my office are going to show pictures of her, because uh, we're going to wind up doing some liposuction on her thighs and her hips. So as you can see here, mm -hmm. she has, can you see what I mean when I say violin? I don't want to use the word deformity, violin shape. She comes out here, she goes in and she flares out in her thighs. Well, that's we about get half rid of, of this, And we get rid of this, we could give her sort of a curve to her, and we'll just change her shape. Dr. Sobel and Shannon, you go to the office. We're going to watch this happen. By the end of the show, you're going to see what we do with Shannon right here and now, OK? We'll be right back. You are the fox. You're up my stage. This is Mary Duffy. Mary is the executive director, she's a real interesting job, of Ford Models Special Sizes Division. And uh, so 
you work with the most beautiful women in the world, right? She's also working on an infomercial called Becoming You, which is meant to help women simplify their beauty routines while feeling better about themselves inside. Now, you've been listening backstage. What do you think about what you've heard so far? Uh, I know that a great many of those models in Ford have had, with instruction from the higher powers in Ford, have had this nipped and this tucked and this done. If so beauty is your profession. If you're an actress or a model, that's one thing. But some of what I'm hearing out on this stage is a time warp. I mean, God made you, Mattel made the Barbie doll. Which one is more likely to make a mistake? Excuse me. Oh. <laughs> God, also, God also made cosmetic surgeons. God. <laughs> Well, if you want to go that far, he also made the atom bomb. I mean, so, you know, I mean, everything... No, that's where the Germans it's... weren't, they? No, I actually reinvented it. You might spend a little more time in a book and a little less time in the mirror. Oh! <laughs> have you... Excuse me, have you ever had liposuction? That's not the issue. I'm not here to discuss what I do and do not want to do with myself. We all have the right to do but what we want to do. But you're here to discuss do. what every... Okay, no, so that's right. We except all have I'm the not going to make a judgment, although do. I will say to the lady on the end, I, I am amazed that in 1996 a woman would go on television and brag that a lusty lawyer fired a chubby paralegal to hire her so he could look it's at her. It's not bragging. Thing. Thank you again. It's not about bragging. It wasn't her fault, but she's so you happy know, about it. it. Wasn't, I wasn't thrilled. Was I gloating, audience? Yes. I gloating. Yes. Yes. No. yes. No. We're thrilled. We're, we're in a society. Hi, you know. Sally. <laughs> so, yeah, sure, I felt a little guilty, but I mean, you know, we're in a society where you do what you have to do to get ahead. You know, I didn't ask to have her fired. I didn't ask to have her fired. I just went and turned in my resume. You know, I did not ask to I, have her fired. I think the question fired. is. Uh, how far is too far? Is that what you're saying? I think that that's a question that each individual would have to answer. And I, I think that Shannon, for example, wanting to have something done with her thighs, if that's what she really wants to do, she has the right to do it. But the purpose of life, most people seem to think in the 90s, according to books that are being read and things that are being said on television, is to evolve, to become, to go through life and to grow naturally. If you're stuck in a period of life 10 or 15 years earlier, you're trying to keep yourself at a certain age and not go through the natural process of aging, as by late mother used to say, getting older beats the alternative, which is obviously dying young. And I'm not going to stand here and apologize to you, gee, I'm 51, I never meant to be this old, I should have died at 43, because you could have me committed. <laughs> really, I mean, that's insane. Going through life and evolving, God made life as a progressive situation. You're smarter when you're older. So why do you work in the modeling industry? Because I invented large size and petite models. I wanted, and older models, I wanted a sense of inclusion. I wanted all women to know that beauty comes in all sizes, ages, heights, and colors. We'll take a break. We'll be right back. Welcome back. We've heard from a 26-year-old, a 36-year-old, and a 40-year-old who all admit they would like to hold back the hands of time or uh, merely enhance it, hang on to beauty and youth. And what's interesting to me is that our older guests say they're much more at ease with their age than the younger guests. This is Joyce Fedral. Joyce is the author of a book called Definition, Shape Without Bulk, 15 Minutes a Day. And, jo and uh, should we say how old Joyce is? Joyce, do we yes. care? Yes, I, I'm very proud of my age. I wear it as a badge, badge of courage. <laughs> how old? 52. 52. <laughs> Joining us is, now, unfortunately, you're just a, a chicken. You're yes. just a kid. 
Yes. Because sitting next to you is 72-year-old Audrey Noble. Audrey is a weightlifter. She holds the world record in two different events. Three. Three. Then Three. you have 54-year-old Eleanor Kaplan, who trains several times a week with her trainer, whose name is Barbara Marl. And you have 54-year-old Sweet Annie, who says the secret to long life is in the hundreds of vitamins, hundreds of vitamins that she takes. Joyce, you're 52. Are you in the best shape of your life? Yes, I am, Sally, and I'll be honest with you. Years ago, I used to work out with weights that took an hour and 15 minutes a day. And you know what? I'm lazy now. I'm tired. I'm not doing one thing extra that I have to do. So I can sit and look at you and tell you the God's honest truth. I don't work out more than 15 to 30 minutes a day. And the thing is, I developed a program. My new workout is with light weights, but you go up and down a pyramid, and you burn maximum fat and get tiny muscles instead of that big hulking muscle. Tiny muscles tiny muscle. under the flat. The super set, right. And you, you, you said you use eight pounds. That was interesting. What I'd like to well, see wait, you... I had to work my way up right. to eight pounds. Okay, but you know what I'd love to see you do? Three, five, eight, five, three. That's the pyramid, okay? It's very easy to do. Look, Sally, we're about the same age, okay? Right. And, and, and I remember four years ago, I was on your show. Was I starting to do weights then? I've gotten nowhere. No, because you didn't, <laughs> nowhere. You didn't do my workout. I'm telling You're you, Sally, right. I guarantee You're you. Right. I'm telling you, it breaks my heart I to go see. into that gym and I just get scared. Okay, everybody, a lot of people here know me, okay? I say to someone, if you do my program and it doesn't work, I want you to write me a letter and tell me, please. I not do that. I promise Better not you. do that. The entire country, you should see these bags Sally, of mail. Sally, you will be wearing something to show off your back. Look, you look at my back, right? Now, I'm not bragging, but look, you know, you know what these, you know the old lady's back, what do they call it, the uh, dowager's uh, hump or something? Hello, I'd be getting that right now. And about weight, look, I'm not skinny. I'm sorry. I want to eat. I'm hungry. I love eating. No, no, I want to eat. I want to eat. But, 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 but one more thing. Sally, let, let's continue with the weights. <laughs> Hold on. Audrey, let me first tell everyone about your record in weightlifting, because we have some men here who do that. You compete in three categories. Yes. You have lifted 181.7 pounds doing squats. Squats. You bench press 82 and a half pounds, yes. but you say this is not your best event you lift 214.7 pounds in a dead lift. I have no idea what I'm talking about at all. Uh, a lot of women go to the gym, as you know I do, but how did you get involved in competitive weightlifting? I almost fell into it by accident. I was uh, doing uh, weightlifting for rehabilitation after I'd had shoulder surgery and uh, getting back into doing deadlifts and I signed up for a meet I thought I was gonna just do deadlifts and found out it was a full meet and I had to do squats deadlifts and bench presses <laughs> so two weeks before the meet my coach gave me a quick session doing in doing squats and I entered the meet that was a little over a year and a half ago and since that time I have been in five full meets and set four world records eight American <laughs> also competes in the senior Olympics what events do you compete in in the Olympics? I have competed in 19 different events in the last 19. 10 years. Uh huh. But anyway, from the track and field events, the sprints are my favorite. Oh, you but sprint. I've been, yeah. 50 meters, 100 what, what, meters. What sprints are you in? Well, they used 50 meter, 100 meters, and 200 meters. Okay. And I'm trying to get up to doing the 400 at the state if I get there. And, uh, <laughs> but I've been in badminton and bowling and table tennis and air rifle shoot and high jumps one year. And high jumps. <laughs> uh -huh. Audrey, I had no place to work at, no place to practice, so I just did that one year. And Are you worried about getting older, Audrey? <laughs> no. I'm, uh -huh. I'm living life to the fullness, and I think that we should be more interested in quality of life than longevity. All right. Yeah. Eleanor is 57 and in great shape. Eleanor, what yes. do you do in your training? 
Well, I do interval programs. My trainer, Barbara, here has taught me how to stay very interested in working out by doing different types of exercises in the hour that I train with her or the two hours I train with her a week. A week. You do two hours a week. Yes. Okay. Eleanor, you were not always this fit. How did you get in shape? What motivated you? Um, actually, when I, I'm, I'm just going to correct you a little bit. I'm going to be 58, not 54. And when I started turning 50, I found that I wasn't as flexible as I used to be. Just general kind of movements like um, stepping off a curb or jumping out of a, one of my kids' cars. And I wanted to feel that flexibility again. And that's what really motivated me. All right, I'm going to ask Audrey to set up uh, to show her fitness routine. And uh, we're going to see her in action in just a minute. Not everybody runs to the gym to find a fountain of youth. This is Sweet Annie, and Sweet Annie <laughs> takes hundreds of vitamins you to stay young. Uh, let me read people your daily vitamin intake. Bee pollen, new life formula, potassium, pionogenol? Pycnogenol. Pycnogenol. L-glutamine, lecithin, ginkgo, coexamine, Q10, <laughs> formula FB2, royal jelly, canine garlic, uh, blanche, bohosh, black cohosh, black cohosh, sarsaparilla, silica, kelp, oxpro, vitamin E, selenium, vitamin C, propolis, elysium, A, arginine, L orthonine, calcium, magnesium, barren, RNA, and DNA. Quite a list. How do you take DNA? In a tablet form. In, and in, in a tablet form, and it helps to keep your cells young because your cells change every two years, and you, everybody's going to grow older. You're going to you're going to get a wrinkle. You're going to grow older, but you know we can put all those creams on our faces. But if you don't have vitamin C and pycnogenol, bioflavonoids. The collagen doesn't stay in your skin. Do so you uh, all day take these? I mean, I pretty much spread them out over the day, or if I'm in a hurry, I can do a handful. I don't recommend it, everybody. And, and you don't all need to take all those things, but you all do need antioxidants because antioxidants are anti aging and anti disease. You need to feel good. Now, Audrey is here with her trainer, Rex. Rex, what is Audrey going to do for us? Uh, she's going to do a standard deadlift. Um, this is a competitive lift that she'd be doing in a meet. And uh, uh -huh. this is a, the third lift in a series of three lifts that, that she would perform. So Okay. We have a gentleman. You want to come down and just stand with me? <coughs> We're going to go see what she does. This gentleman is a weightlifter, too. He's How old are you? 20. He's 20 years old. I what, work out with 20 years old. What are you going to lift? <laughs> you work out with somebody his? Do you have anyone in your gym 72? No. <laughs> okay, you just stand here with me. Okay, okay, Audrey, okay. let's see you lift these things. How much weight is she going to lift? This is about 200 pounds right 200. here. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. And she's 72. Would you believe that would happen? No way. No way. Okay. You ready? Oh. Hips down. Hips down. Rex, what do people say when you tell them you have a 72-year-old female weightlifter? If they're in the gym, they usually go home. Yeah. <laughs> Hips down, hips down, head up. Good, that's good. Awesome. What do you think? Incredible. Incredible. We'll be right back. She's using a weighted jump rope, by the way. Great routine. 
<laughs> she is using a weighted jump rope. She's using a weighted jump rope. This rope weighs a half a pound. So as she's pushing it around, it's equivalent to about seven pounds. Great. You really feel it in your upper body when you're doing a workout. I asked Audrey, Audrey, do you, you take vitamins, a multivitamin? Yes. yes but I do you use steroids like no, a lot of weightlifters? This, this is drug free lifting. Drug free power drug -free lifting. Drug free lifting. That's all power. Cindy and Jeanette, we do you guys work out at all? We, yes, I, I work do. out, yes I do. You do? Uh, but you know, I, we were talking during break, uh, Cindy and I, and we were wondering, what's with the di reverse discrimination? You know, why is it everybody's touting the fact that if you're overweight, it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's, it's okay for, for some people. I'm not condemning that. But if we have the courage mm -hmm. to go under the knife and go through this, then, you know, it takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of courage to do that. And if I you want to reshape been... yourself, and if you can, I don't think there's any reason to condemn that. I What's think you, it might have been the comment you made about the paralegal getting yeah, fired. Absolutely. I didn't I, you know, I think that She didn't fire the paralegal. I didn't, I mean, no, you I didn't, didn't fire. ask for it. I just turned in my resume. And then right. the, after I was hired, I found out from a colleague that the reason that position opened was because he let her go to bring me in. Does Which that make you does that make you feel better though? Does that mean I should quit? Does it make you feel better? Yeah. We're all women and we need to we need to support each other. Even if, if some people are doing something we may never do, we need to really work on that and have love for each other and try to support each other and catch ourselves when we want to attack. Because really, we're all the same deep down inside. And women, you know, we need to keep together because those men are at our backs. We got to keep together. <laughs> I love you. Uh, the comment that you made, I, I don't mean to attack you, and you have every right to do it, what you want. It's your money and it's your body. Yes, However, it's you. not courage that's doing it. To me, it's vanity. I, I wonder how much time... Is it bad to be vain, though? I mean, is, it's but not... How much time do you, you have if you're constantly thinking about, well, my nostrils, which I have never heard of, <laughs> need to be narrowed, your nose needs to be done, you need to do this, you need to define, how much time do you have this, to think about anything else in this world if all you're doing is thinking about yourself? I wouldn't call that I'm not obsessed with it. Vanity I mean, that's not all I think, think about. I mean, I have a... I have a yes, I have Audrey. A, Surgery. How much time could you spend on the rest of Vanity the Vanity is when you on? think the world should Audrey? accept you just the way you are, not when you think you could do with some improvement. I, I think. disagree. No. Audrey? Go ahead, Audrey. I think we are entirely too caught up in the physical. I think we need to realize that we are very complex beings and we need to take care of the inner, the, the physical, mental, and spiritual aspects of ourselves would be a whole the round of go. The psychologist, the world famous psychologist Maslow said that once our basic needs like food and shelter are met, mm -hmm. that the ultimate goal of life is to become, to evolve, That's spiritual right. evolving. And right. the problem is if you are so worried about the next thing that you're going to do to make yourself look one drop better all the time, then in my opinion at least, it's not your nose that needs rev revamping, it's your life. Okay. Now. What we're going to do is we're going to go over to... <laughs> yes. So I, I think, you know, there is such thing as excessive surgery, without I mean, a doubt. But I don't think anyone could prejudge someone else. I think basically it's what it makes someone happy. Sure. Okay? If, if one surgery makes you happy, then fine. But a lot of people were searching for something else. Maybe it's not the surgery. Maybe it's a problem with something else in their life. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that's very important for I the doctor to evaluate. Yes. You don't just go ahead and just do surgeries on somebody. Constantly. But, but if, if, in moderation, something may, uh, if you fix someone's nose, you fix someone's breast, you have liposuction, you fix their skin, make them look younger, and they feel better, okay? And, but it's important for the doctor to delve into the psychological aspect. Is it that they really hate what they're seeing, or is it some other problem? Uh, well, we're the kind of happy that Shannon's going to get what she wants. We're going to go to your office now, and we're going to watch. We'll be right back. Hey Shannon, this is your day. Yes, it okay. is. Okay. Um, we're all marked up, and what we're going to do now here, why don't you turn around and let me take a look. Okay. Now Shannon has a typical violin deformity, and what that means is the shape, her hips come out and her thighs come out. So she has little saddlebags, and it has a tendency to go in 
in between our hips and our thighs. And if you really look close at it, it really has a sort of a shape like a violin. And what we're going to do today, we're going to go local anesthetic into the, both areas, and we're going to use the tumescing technique, which is a wet technique where we inject xylocaine and saline underneath the skin to numb it under a local anesthetic. We use very small instruments, which you'll see later on, and under, with a small, small incision, a quarter of an incision, we're going to suck out all this fat. Okay, Shannon, we're ready to start. Okay. Uh, if you feel any pain, let me know, okay? We finished the local anesthetic. Was that too bad? Wasn't bad at all. Okay, so now we're ready to stick the instrument right in that small little incision. Okay, and we're going to start on your hip first. Okay, so what we're doing is going up and down underneath your skin. Okay, we're between the dermis and the fat, and if you look, you can see some of the fat coming out, okay? Now there's no bleeding, or very little bleeding, because we gave you a cold solution with anesthetic and epinephrine, which stops the bleeding. So, we don't need any transfusions, you don't need any blood replacement, we just give you a little fluid replacement. In a little while, we'll stand you up, and we'll look at it again, and we'll make sure we took out just enough, and it's even. And you'll let me know, okay, whether it's even or not. Okay, so we'll look at it together, and both of us will be the judge. Now, this is not a procedure, Chad, as you know, to get rid of cellulite. It may help it a little, but you don't do liposuction to get rid of cellulite, as we discussed. You get rid of right. changing the shape of the body. Right. Okay? We're going to change your contour. Your shadow is going to look different. Two hours later, the surgery is done, and you no longer have your violin. Your hips are down, okay, your thighs are down, and if you look at it, you have just your thighs and your hips sort of meet together, and they, don't, they no longer have that indentation. Now, I should let you know that it's swollen now. It's only oh. going to look better, okay? That's Each week it'll look better. It's going to keep getting better. So anyway, we're done. Oh. Yeah. And uh, what I want to do is show you what we took out. This is not for you to take home, you can throw this away, but this is a fact, okay? We started out with, obviously it was empty, mm -hmm. and now we took out approximately 1,800 cc's. Mm. And this is all fat from here up. This is mixed in with a little blood, but most of this is just fluid. So you really just lose maybe a teaspoon to two teaspoons of blood, and the rest is just the fluid that we injected into her. And uh, all this is your fat. Mm -hmm. Now you gotta stay in good shape, you gotta work out, but mm -hmm. you don't no longer have that violent shape. We've now totally right. changed your shape. A lot of different viewpoints. Eleanor and uh, Shannon are probably right there in the middle, which is where we hope you are. Thank you for being with us today. I've really enjoyed it. See you next time. <laughs>